Hello my dear kids. I hope that you all are in pink of your health and must be excited about today's topic. So the topic for today is decimals. But before starting this topic, I want each one of you to get familiar with the concept of decimal fractions. Do you know what a decimal fraction is? Yes, a decimal fraction is a fraction in which the denominators are 10 Hundred, thousand, ten thousand, and so on. So, in order to understand this topic in a better way, I have taken a strip of paper and I have divided it into ten equal parts. Yes. Now, what if I want to shade one part out of these ten equal parts? Now, let us represent the fraction for this shaded portion. It would come out to be one upon ten. Now, as you know that a decimal fraction consists of a denominator ten, hundred, or thousand. Now, this fraction can be converted into a decimal number on the basis of number of zeros in the denominator. So, the decimal comes out to be zero point one. Now, what if I shade three parts out of the ten equal parts? My fraction comes out to be Three upon ten, which is equal to zero point three. Now, as you know that how do I represent a decimal? A decimal is represented with the help of a dot. And if I want to write the number name for this decimal, I would write it as point three. Or I can also write it as decimal three. Now moving further, let us shade five parts out of the ten parts. Now, in order to write down the fraction of the shaded portion, it comes out to be five upon ten, which is equal to zero point five. So, as you see, that this situation can be possible when these number of boxes are equals to hundred, or they are equals to thousand, ten thousand, or so on. Now, in the next case, let us take a sheet and make a grid of hundred boxes. And out of those hundred boxes, let us shade twenty-five parts. So, in order to represent the fraction for the shaded portion, it comes out to be twenty-five upon hundred. Now, how do I represent this fraction with the denominator hundred into a decimal number? So, as you notice that the number of zeros here are two. So I will represent it as zero point two five. Now remember one thing that the number of digits after a decimal is known as decimal places. For example, here suppose after the decimal I have one digit, so it has one decimal place. Now after the decimal here I have two digits, so it has. Two decimal places. Very good. Now, if after a decimal I have three digits, it would be considered as three decimal places. Very good. Now, let us further learn about how to represent a given fraction as a decimal. Suppose I am given sixty-five upon ten. Here, as you see, that ten consists of only one zero. So I will count one's place and I will put a slash in between. Which tells me that my decimal number would be six point five. Now let us consider that if I am given a fraction four upon ten, so the decimal fraction representing it would be zero point four. Now let us take some more example with the denominators hundred. Now similarly, if I am given one hundred twenty six upon hundred, so as you can see that here the number of zeros are two. So all you need to do is you need to count ones place, tens place, and put a slash in between, which tells me that my answer would be one point two six. Now if I'm given five upon hundred, now suppose if I'm given a fraction five upon hundred, so the decimal fraction representing it would be zero point zero five. Now in order to write a number name for a given decimal, always remember. That this would be written as one, then this would be referred to as point, and always separate the digits after the decimal, which would be two, six, 
Now here if I want to write my number name for this one it could come out to be decimal 0 5. As you can see there is no digit here and it is a 0 so I can skip this and I can write decimal 0 5. I hope now you know how to write a number name for a given decimal. Since we have done so many examples, so you must have noticed that a decimal fraction or a decimal number consists of three parts. That is a decimal which is represented by a point or a dot. And the left side of the point is considered as a whole part. And the right side of a decimal is considered to be a decimal part. So as you know that if you want to write down the number name for this decimal number, you need to write this as 625.31. As you know that after the point, you need to separate the digits. So it would be 625.31. Very good. You got it correct. Now, taking the same example and moving further, let us learn how to write the expanded form for a given decimal. Now, as you know that on the left side of a decimal is a whole part. So, always refer to it as ones, tens, hundred in this manner. And this portion is represented as tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands and so on. Since here we are given only the two places, so the first one would be tens and the second one would be hundreds. Now, if similarly I want to write the place value for this two, so it would be twenty or it would be two tens. And if suppose I want to write the place value for this one, so it would be one upon hundred or it can be one hundred. Yes. In order to write the expanded form for this one, it comes out to be 600 plus 20 plus 5 plus, now in place of this dot, replace this by the addition sign. Now this tenth would be represented as 3 upon 10 plus 1 upon 100, which shows that this is 3 tenth and this is 1 hundred. Now, let us suppose I am given a question where I need to write the short form for the expanded form of the given decimal. So, if I need to write this down, I need to know that this is the whole part that is 40 plus 5 which is equals to 45 that is 1's place and 10's. As you notice here, this is 2 hundredths which shows that it is, would be a decimal and if I change it into a decimal form, it would be 0 0.02 which shows that 2 is at 100th place and since nothing was there at 10th place, it would be represented by a 0. So the correct short form is 45.02 which is a decimal number. So I hope that all the basic concept of this chapter is clear to you and you will continue and do more practice for the given. Now, in order to convert a decimal into a fraction, always refer to the decimal places. If I notice here, there is only one decimal place, that is number of digits after a decimal. So, it would be represented as 6 upon 10. Now, if I notice in this case, there are how many decimal places? There are two decimal places because there are two digits after a decimal. So, I will remove a point from here and I will refer to as and I will write it as 175 upon 100. Now, here if I see it is 0 0.09. So, the fraction for it would be 9 upon 100. Because if I remove the decimal, there are two digits after the decimal. So now I hope that you very well know that how to convert a decimal number into its fractional form. As we are very well aware or we have learned before that how to write a number name for a given decimal. But what if I need to do the opposite of it? That is now I need to represent it in figures. Now always go by the name that is decimal 5, 7. So this shows that there is no whole part and then there is a decimal and then there is a decimal part that is 5, 7. So my decimal number comes out to be 0 
five seven. Now in the second part it is two hundred six point eight three. Now as you know that on the left side of the point there is two hundred six. So the whole part is two hundred six point is represented by a dot, and then there is a decimal part that is eight three. So I will write eight. Three. So in this way, I can represent it in figures. Have a nice day.